Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to Get Ready With America. My name is SJ and I'm pretty unabashedly from New Jersey. I have lived in this state for the vast majority of my 33 years and I have worked in several levels of government and campaigned at every level. And yet I could not tell you anything that is happening in campaigns here. I don't know if it's that I'm not following the right media or just nothing is happening except that elections are happening. So we'll go over the statewide stuff today. Voting in the state is a little different this year though, so I'll cover all of that. I've also created the resource doc again, linked in the description box so you can read up on candidates and issues. I'm still a little wonky for my procedure, so I've already done my face makeup and we'll just do my eyes on camera today. To pay homage to the Garden State, I'll be using the Plant Gay palette to create a colorful garden look. Speaking of gay and New Jersey, does anyone else remember where they were when Jim McGreevy had the press conference when he came out and admitted to having an affair with the guy he appointed as Homeland Security Advisor and then resigned? I was in my high school auditorium between performances of a summer theater production. Truly a big comeback by that man. Anyway, let's get into it. In the race to reside in Trumpthwacket, yes, that is what our governor's mansion is called, Democratic Governor Phil Murphy faces former Republican Assemblyman Jack Chitterelli. Murphy worked for Goldman Sachs for a couple decades before he served as a finance chair for the Democratic National Committee and was eventually tapped by President Obama to serve as ambassador to Germany from 2009 to 2013. It didn't mention this in my Virginia video, but Terry McAuliffe had a similar trajectory. Rich guy who helped the Democrats get money for their campaigns and became governor on his first shot. Murphy has been pretty competent with his COVID response, though that's a subjective opinion, but he definitely should have fired Marcus Hicks instead of letting him slide out. Chitterelli served in the assembly from 2011 to 2018 and makes his actual money in the medical publishing industry. Like Glenn Youngkin in Virginia, he has been oscillating his message between Trumpian talking points and moderate appeasing policy stances so he can hold on to his base voters and hopefully gain from the pool of independents whose subjective opinion of Murphy's COVID response is unfavorable. His go-to has been that Murphy is out of touch with taxpayers, which I swear to God is always the Republican talking point in this state every gubernatorial election. There are also three others on the ballot. Green Party candidate Madeline Hoffman, Libertarian Party candidate Greg Millay, and Socialist Party candidate Joanne Kuniansky. I've linked everyone's campaign websites in this video's reference doc. New Jersey does not separately elect a lieutenant governor. Instead, a running mate campaigns with the gubernatorial candidates and upon election, their primary job is to serve as secretary of state. We only just instated the position in 2010, partially due to former Governor McGreevy's early departure, him being among a few early departures and major accidents in the 2000s that made it clear the state needed to designate a permanent number two instead of the president of the Senate. The current lieutenant governor running again with Murphy is Sheila Oliver, who served in the assembly and as speaker of the chamber for years before she was knocked off the podium due to some political jockeying, only for her to then become the second most powerful elected official in the state. Love that for her. 
Chitterelli's running mate is former state senator Diane Allen, who also served for several years in the legislature as a solid moderate who regularly earned bipartisan support. Though, she's gotten a little Trumpy recently. They have signs that say Jack and Diane for their joint rallies, and have had John Cougar Mellencamp stuck in my head for days. I honestly don't think lieutenant governors have helped much in the three elections. They've been on tickets, but they've all been very solidly picked choices, so maybe it'll mean something someday, like vice presidential picks. The entire legislature, 40 Senate, and 80 Assembly seats are also up for election. New Jersey is divided into 40 legislative districts that are each represented by one senator and two assembly people that generally run in a slate together by party, but are all elected individually by majority. So you can have representatives of different parties in a district. I was not aware that this was weird until it was pointed out to me this year by someone not from New Jersey. Apparently, we are one of only seven states that do this. Democrats hold super majorities in both houses, and uh, that's not really slated to change. I believe only two districts are competitive. The second district in South Jersey and the 16th district in Central Jersey. It exists. Both districts currently have split representation with a Republican senator and Democratic assemblyman. Both senators are retiring. Uh, the one in the second actually already left office to join the Murphy administration. And a Democratic assemblyman from each district is running for the seat against former Republican elected officials. Only 15 of the 120 seats are being vacated by the current legislator, and two-thirds of those are in districts that definitely won't switch parties, so I foresee very little shifting. For references, I linked the Wikipedia pages about the Senate and Assembly elections, so you can see who's running and look up their campaign websites. Also on everyone's ballot, two statewide questions. This is even harder to find info on, and I wasn't even aware of them until I got my ballot. Question one is to allow betting on college sports, either postseason games held in New Jersey or any games with a New Jersey team. Now, New Jersey student athletes can't make money until 2025, but the rest of us want to make money off of them now. I'm truly shocked. I can't find people talking about this anywhere, advocating either side, really. Question two is to allow organizations to use raffle money toward the organization. Can you believe this isn't already a thing, aside from seniors and veterans? This state is so weird. I linked in the references doc a Ballotpedia entry where you can see the language and some info for each question. The voter registration deadline for this election was October 12th. We're past that now, but if you're remotely interested in hearing about the upgrades to voter registration New Jersey has made, then watch my last video linked in the cards. All voters are eligible for a vote by mail ballot. Last year, for the primary and general elections, mail-in ballots were automatically sent to all voters. This year, they've only been sent to voters who had applied to receive one. As I said, anyone is allowed to vote by mail, but you have to submit a paper application with your signature on it to your county clerk. 
I've linked the VBM info page in the references doc and at the bottom of that page you'll find links to forms for every county. The deadline to apply for a VBM ballot is Tuesday, October 26th, as in that's when your application needs to be received by the clerk's office. Unless you want to apply in person at the office, which you can do until Monday, November 1st at 3 p.m. If you mail back your ballot, it must be postmarked by November 2nd at 8 p.m. and received by November 8th to be counted. Alternately, you can drop it off at your county's Board of Elections office by 8 p.m. on the 2nd or in a drop box near you by 8 p.m. on the 2nd. I dropped mine off at my municipal building this week. The reference doc also includes a link to the list of Dropbox locations in each county, as well as the link to track your ballot status. Please note that you cannot drop off your ballot at an early voting location or election day polling location. Speaking of early voting, New Jersey is doing that and claiming it's a new thing. For the past decade, since no excuse vote by mail was enacted, people could go to their Board of Elections or other designated locations and vote early by filling out a mail-in ballot and turning it in on the spot. They didn't do that last year due to COVID, and this year there's instead a designated early in-person voting period where people vote in an actual booth like election day. Early voting is running from October 23rd to the 31st from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday through Saturdays and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sundays. Every town does not have an early voting location, but voters do need to go to a location within their home county to vote. I've of course linked the page with the list of locations in the reference doc. And for the rest of you, the polls are open on election day, Tuesday, November 2nd from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. If you're voting for the first time in a new voting district, bring an ID. I've linked the list of polling locations in the reference doc as well. And that's it. If you're in New Jersey, I highly encourage you to get voting out of the way as soon as you can because it'll likely be easy and quick. Also, campaigns will stop contacting you because you'll come up in the system as having voted and you'll get filtered out of their lists. Pro tip. There are two and a half weeks until election day and I'm hoping to squeeze in at least one more video about major mayoral races happening that I haven't covered yet. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying my content and consider becoming a monthly supporter on my Patreon. My vision is to ramp up pretty hard next month going into the midterm election year, so I hope you stick around. I'll see you again soon.